Once upon a time in the early 2000s, there was the original Bionicle storyline, a LEGO action figure series about robotic characters with specific headgear and affiliations toward different elements, kind of like Avatar The Last Airbender combined with Power Rangers. Now because the characters are mechanical, it makes sense to take them apart and build their pieces back together. But what's even more significant about Bionicle is how it presented this giant narrative across multiple platforms of media, from comics to movies to web serials and chapter books. If you're not familiar with any of them, that's okay, because I'm about to condense and explain the narrative's lore right here, right now. This is Lava Pasta's Guide to Bionicle Part 4, Bara Magna. While it's still a continuation of the same narrative, 2009 was like a soft reboot for the Bionicle series, where it took place on an alien planet with a new society, new characters, and new Lego pieces to build with. This is Bara Magna, a desert wasteland where Glatorian warriors and Agori villagers structure their society around gladiatorial combat to determine the ownership of resources. Once again, there are six color-coded elemental factions, but considering how the Sand Tribe has regressed into feral scorpion people, the Rock Tribe is plotting to take over everything, and how there are Glatorians who get banished for dishonorable conduct, there's only really two heroic characters in the first wave of 2009 Glatorian sets, which is good because it puts the protagonists at a disadvantage and makes the setting more interesting. In fact, most of the story at this point is actually focused on world building and giving the audience a sense of what the daily routine in Bara Magna is like, instead of trying to get the ball rolling on the main narrative, which gets put off until the summer wave. Although they still adhere to the same basic structure as the Anika builds from 2006, I'd say that the Glatorian character designs maintain enough differences between each other to stand out and have interesting silhouettes. Honestly, my favorite aspect about Bionicle 2009 is the aesthetics, which feature vibrant colors and bright backgrounds that feel like a genuine throwback to the franchise's classic origins on the island of Matanui. I mean, Bara Magna might be covered in sand, but it's still refreshing to see actual sunshine in an organic environment, as well as the grand return of saturated red, a color that had not been substantially present in a Bionicle canister set since 2002. After five years of being stuck with dark red fire protagonists, 8985 Glatorian legend Akar brings back the same color palette from the original Toa Tahu, and from the moment I purchased him in summer 2009, I was pretty much all set for the rest of the year. Akar is one of the characters from the direct-to-video film Bionicle The Legend Reborn, in which the character of Mata Nui finds himself on Bara Magna after being forcibly ejected out of his original body in 2008. To be honest, The Legend Reborn has the best computer animation in a Bionicle movie period, but it's also not very good due to its inconsistent cinematography as well as a distinct lack of urgency or tension for most of the film. I mean, the previous Bionicle movies may have some dated CGI that doesn't really resemble Bionicle pieces, but they at least had solid plot structures and a sense of dramatic escalation, whereas The Legend Reborn feels like it doesn't have a clear focus or know how to manage its time. Plus, I also think that there should have been more of an actual reason as to why the Rock Tribe wants to take over everything, instead of just being because they're evil. And the movie should have also been more critical of the Agori society. You know, have them lean more into the pessimistic, fend-for-yourself mentality, so that Matanui's proposition of social teamwork would have more contextual weight. The villain of the film shouldn't just be the scrawl, it should also be the society that is structured around the impractical, archaic ritual of fighting each other for control over the resources. At the end of Bionicle The Legend Reborn, 
Mata Nui discovers a giant robot much like the one that used to be his original body, but predates his own existence. You see, Mata Nui's Great Spirit robot body was originally made by a group of mythical great beings, who based their design upon a previous giant robot experiment that didn't pan out, and populated the new one with Toa and Matoran species based upon the Glatorian and Agori species. Their home planet was originally known as Spherus Magna, but after a disaster caused the planet to fracture into three planetoids known as Aqua Magna, Bota Magna, and Bara Magna, the great being sent Matanui on a mission to study the cosmos and one day restore Spherus Magna back to its former glory. A task that is still unfinished due to the actions of Makuta Teradax. The very same Makuta who put Matanui to sleep during the Metru Nui storyline and injected his own consciousness inside the Great Spirit robot in 2008. With everything coming together, the final battle of the original Bionicle storyline occurs in 2010, where Matanui takes control of the prototype robot and battles Makuta's Great Spirit robot on the surface of Bara Magna. It's a climactic showdown between the most mythical names in the franchise, and although it has the smallest line of toy products, the 2010 sets are all throwbacks to previous years in Bionicle history, featuring the Glatorian Gresh and Skrull from 2009, a Blue Skakti, reminiscent of the Paraka from 2006, a Heat Vision Rakshi reminiscent of 2003, Toa Takanuva from Bionicle The Mask of Light, and Toa Tahu, striking his iconic pose from 2001. We even get a return to the Collectathon objectives via the Golden Armor pieces, and even though the Bionicle Star sets might be in a smaller, incongruent scale, they're also a lot more affordable and give the audience another chance to reacquire iconic characters with updated pieces made from completely new molds. Unfortunately, 2010 would be the last and final year for the original Bionicle storyline, as it was meant to be cancelled after the unexpectedly poor toy sales in 2009, which I suspect might have something to do with the terrible socket joints that would literally fracture, especially on the Glatorian hands that are the most important pieces of articulation because it's where the weapons are held and you do not want them to be breaking so easily after just a few minutes of play. But, with that being said, it's honestly commendable how the creative team rallied together to give the audience one final wave of toys, as well as an actual conclusion to this nine-year-old narrative. Sure, it's abrupt and it's no Avengers Endgame, but I'm just glad that it actually exists. In the end, Tahu uses the golden armor to destroy an army of Rakshi, which distracts Makuta long enough for him to get pushed into a meteorite that impales his core processor, and Matanui sacrifices the last of his power to restore Spherus Magna to the planet it once was becoming a new haven for the Matoran, Agori, Toa, Glatorian, as well as every other Bionicle species. So despite all the additional adventures that I'm sure happened in the minds of the audience, as well as head writer Greg Farshti, who was still making story updates into 2011, the absolute madman, the Bionicle characters all lived happily ever after. The Bara Magna storyline may not be the most perfect years in Bionicle history, thanks to the lack of quality in The Legend Reborn and the socket joints on the Glatorian hands, but it was still Bionicle. Although I do feel like its attempts at nuance feel more like an illusion of nuance compared to previous years, I still appreciate how Greg Farshti tried to create a completely different world, where the status quo was to look out for oneself where heroes were hard to find, and even when it was set on an alien planet, Bionicle was one of the greatest multimedia experiences ever designed for children, spanning across movies, comics, web serials, video games, action figures, and chapter books. But since everything was made out of Legos, spending time building the characters made them feel more personal, 
and because we had the option of creating our own ideas, it also inspired a whole generation of artists, character designers, and storytellers. It wasn't just about selling toy products, it was about engaging with the audience's imagination through beautiful artwork, interesting characters, and dramatic storytelling. For me and for others, nothing else will ever surpass the experience that is Bionicle.